is Dr. Carmen Smith and thank you for joining me for this video. I'm making a series of videos to wake people up to what is going on in the world globally. I mean, a lot of people know that there's a pandemic, they know that there's racial injustice, they know that we have a political divide, but they may not understand what is underneath all of this chaos. And a lot of this chaos is creating fear. It fear feeds on each other. Now, as a spiritual teacher and also a mental health therapist, um, I'm very much familiar with the term demons and angels. And in the mental health field, I would, would cringe every time somebody said, well, you know, this person was depressed, they're struggling with their own demons. And I always thought that that term and that way of describing a mental health condition was very demonizing because it hindered people from getting help and it shamed people for having a mental illness. But what I see in the world right now is a spirit of fear which can turn into a demonic energy. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of the things that you're seeing going on in the world is coming from a spirit of fear and it causes people to move away from a love energy, which is divine and angelic, toward more of a destructive nature. And you see that playing out in the world. And there's also a structure in place to create more fear, therefore creating more of a divide, more hate, and more of that demonic energy, which it leads to destruction, meaning homicide, suicide, uh, destruction against humanity increasing in this world. So when I teach about awareness and what's going on and the structural inequities and all of these things that are built, America was built on fear and destruction and it's destroyed a lot of cultures and a lot of people under the guise of capitalism, under the guise of American dream, American freedom, all of that stuff, that's just smoke and mirrors. So when we say that America was built on fear, then we know that there has to be a reckoning. What does that mean? That means that as you see a lot more of this demonic energy and demonic energy coming from fear, you're going to see a lot of chaos. The only antidote to that is going to be love in action. It's not about going to church, and a lot of people can't go to church now because of the, the pandemic. It's not about um, being with other people. This is about going within yourself and saying to yourself, what in me is not aligned with love? And moving those blockages out. Because in order to turn this demonic energy into love or transmute it into love, it has to take place on an individual level. So that is our call to action. Because right now, we have to make that individual choice. How am I bringing love into this planet? How am I being, bringing love and being love in this situation? What is my intention when watching that news? Am I transmuting it into love? Am I seeing the fear-based thinking that is trying to permeate me through my local television station? And am I challenging that? with love and kindness and am I being an activist for love in those areas that I feel are super spreaders of fear. So that's my activism. I'm making these videos, I'm speaking out about implicit bias, I'm informing people and, and bringing people into awareness of everything that does not fit with love, compassion, kindness, patience, and that is powerful against fear. Now we can either be a participant in the fear and spreading of fear, and we can be a participant in it, or we can choose another road, which is love in the face of chaos. And that is the wiser choice. But I think it's also important to recognize that there are entities and uh, demonic energies, that's why 
this is called spiritual warfare. It's not against a person. It is against an energy that a person can inhabit. And we don't want that to be a part of our life. We want to make sure that we are loving, understanding, and compassionate, even towards people that do not agree with us. Because as soon as we formulate an opinion or a subconscious thought about us versus them, we have succumbed to fear and chaos. So this country is going to be going through many different stages, but I want you to know that many of those stages have been talked about throughout the years and it's setting up a stage for um, more chaos. So I want you to, even though you see this chaos breaking out, I want you to remain in a state of calm because you'll know that there's a spiritual layer playing out. And I want you to also be aware of the construct of chaos, which is what we're going to be talking about next. I want you to know the game plan. This is an old game plan and it comes from the 40s um, where I uh, uh, happened to see uh, someone describing what the cabal or the, the um, government uses, not just our government, but other governments use to uh, control the population and keep them under a propaganda spell. First of all, if a government wants to do something or to um, do something that they know is against the people or against the major populace, they have to make sure that the um, populace, which is actually more powerful than those in control of the government, they have to make sure that they are asleep to what's going on. So the first thing that they'll do is they'll divide a people. They'll say us versus them. Now this is deep in our culture and you'll also see it in uh, things that we show our children that there's a hero and there's a villain. So at an early age we teach people that there are only two sides. There's the hero and the villain and you always want to be on the hero's side. Um, then people would play cowboys and Indians and now it's in game form on video form. So if you're a gamer you're familiar with this idea of being the hero and the villain. And so as long as the government can divide you and say that you're the hero, the government is the hero, or whoever is representing those in power at the time because they're shapeshifters, um, then people can get on board with that. And they can say, okay, black people are the villain, and uh, we can rally against that. And, and then, you know, it's the Jews, or it's the Muslims, or it's the Chinese, or it's the Middle East. Somebody has to be a villain for the populace to be distracted. So while you're fighting each other, you create an appearance of popular support. So you use the media and other forms, whether it's coming from the White House press conference room, but you have to have some semblance of popularity. And that's where you have rallies and you have the media showing that, see how big this support is? Because I need to show that this side is the hero side. And I only want that uh, narrative to be shared so that people think that this is the popular side. And then um, there has to be a uh, neutralization of the opposition. So what does that mean? That means that if you're in opposition to me, I have to call you fake news. I have to say that you're not reporting the whole story, that what you do is lies, and I want to steer you in one singular direction of opinion, which is the government's opinion, those in power's opinion. That has to be the opinion that I put out there all the time, and if there's another opinion, I have to neutralize it. And that also means killing people, incarcerating people, cutting off their finances. There are many ways to neutralize an opposition, bringing them in uh, from another country uh, uh, or getting rid of them uh, through annexation. 
uh, and a poisoning that just happened in Russia. So you have to neutralize the opposition. This is the game plan. And then you have to uh, partic participate or escalate mob violence. So you see this playing out in the United States where um, there's a private entity coming in with the police to um, quell uh, people, to arrest people, to um, inflict violence on protesters. Now, the other thing that most people know by now is that the protesters that are um, protesting Black Lives Matter and uh, most are uh, nonviolent, um, you will see infiltrators that are in alignment with this uh, this agenda, which is to increase mob violence. And so when you have infiltrators that are working for this agenda of keeping people divided, they will do the looting and the violence and then escalate the mob violence. Why? So that the media can report that this other entity that was peaceful is actually the villains and law and order who is actually instigating a lot of the violence with tear gas and bullets they are the heroes so you can see how this agenda plays out and then you create a semblance of revolution so then you say law and order won the heroes won and you quell the opposition to that So I just want you to know that that is the steps of this age-old government control. So let's scroll up to the very beginning and let's remind you that first you divide and you divide using fear of the other, whoever the other is. The truth is we're all connected. But the government doesn't want you to know that because then you would have more power than those that are seeking power and that want to remain in power. So they want you to think that you're divided. While you're divided, you're fighting against yourself. Then you create, through propaganda, through rallies, that you have popular support. This is, of course, false, but you want to have the appearance of that so you can show it on the media. Then you want to neutralize the opposition. So you want to get rid of those that are opposed to you. So you want to get rid of them. And usually you kill the leader, like in Martin Luther King. But in Black Lives Matter, there is no leader. And that's the reason why. It's because we know the game plan. You don't want to have a leader uh, of a certain uh, thing going against the cabal because they will be neutralized. So you want to get rid of the opposition and also you tell the media that is not reporting your narrative that they are lying, that it's fake news. The other thing is that you want to have uh, the mob violence. This is what we see playing out now. We also see it escalating when you uh, have someone infiltrating with a private military. That sounds more like a fascist state. It sounds more like a militaristic state. And this is how you create the mob violence. And then all you have to do is say that the people that are being peaceful, that are trying to create change, they're the villains. And who are the people that are going to win this revolution? Because that's what happens next. You have to have a revolution.
And if you say that the people that are causing the violence actually quelled the people that you told did the violence, but that's not true, then you created a false revolution. But as long as you can put it out in the media that law and order won, then you've told the people that were on your side, which is the hero side, because remember it's all about division, that they won. Meanwhile, while all of this was going on, there's currency issues. There's the 1% of the wealthy getting more wealthy. There are people that are not making uh, very much money, falling way underneath the cracks. And all of this is intentional to consolidate wealth and to hide fraud on a major, major scale. All while this distraction is going on. And this is repeated throughout history. But let me tell you about America. America during this time will not be able to sustain power with this game plan. And there's only one way to stop it. And that's what I want to talk about next. You have a president talking about the Second Amendment as a use for people to come out here and use firearms against the people that are protesting. This is the messages that we're seeing. I don't know if you on social media because the news don't tell you everything. But you have to pay attention to what's going on. Or else we're gonna, we have a, a president that's trying to incite a race war. And when the borders are closed, we can't leave. You have people in here that need your help. This is when you and y'all, y'all stand together with the community, with society to stop, to, to stop the governmental oppression, period. We need you. I'm at a loss, man. I'm at a loss, Can you do me a favor? Can you take a kneel? Absolutely. Can you take a kneel? I don't know. That ain't enough for me. That ain't enough for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. to George Floyd, all right? My heart hurts as a human being. Yeah, man, you can get a hug. You can get a hug. You can get a hug. You bet, man. Hey, we can hear you. Respect our property. We'll respect 100% preserve and protect the Constitution and your liberties to peacefully assemble and, and speak the First Amendment, okay? So this spirit of destruction that I've outlined here is reversible. So I'm not saying that we need to live in this and just succumb to this demonic energy that has this game plan playing out. What I'm saying is that we just need to recognize that this is a plan. Once you recognize that, then you're not in it. You can observe it, especially if you've kept your heart loving and compassionate while others seek to hate. Marianne Williamson, who ran for president on the Democratic ticket, ran on a ticket of love and unity. And many people didn't understand that because they're so used to the way the world has been working and will operate in that world long after Marianne Williamson leaves. But there were other people that were intrigued and said, you mean there's another way of living, another way of being? So Marianne Williamson has, um, as a spiritual teacher, author, and brilliant human being, did an op-ed in, op in Newsweek recently. And I'd like to quote from her the last couple of lines. And she talks about how America is basically under a demonic spell. This is spiritual warfare. And the only way to reverse it is this. 
that each of us has a role to play in the healing of our nation's soul. From increasing our capacity of kindness to committing to the collective and political changes that will realign our nation with the angels of our better nature. Until and unless we do so, the manifestation of collective fear will continue to grow and will possibly overwhelm us. The only real remedy is an awakening of the heart and the manifestations of collective love. This country is being dictated by fear and hate, but we can turn that around with our collective love and kindness. We need to have a heart that is big enough to include those who have succumbed to the spirits of demonic agendas. Is your heart big enough? We all depend on it, that it is. Thank you.